17, just 17, a young man battling cancer. It was a hard thing to watch, friends, a very hard thing to watch. And I know some of you folk here this morning knows what it is to watch someone battling cancer and the pain it causes, physical, emotional, mental. It was hard to watch that young lad, 17 he was, battling that deadly disease that's a curse to the human body. And cancer is a terrible thing when it gets to grip with you. I remember in 1998 visiting a lady from Ballygolly who was battling cancer. And she says, I'm not going to allow this cancer to overcome me. But I'm going to overcome cancer. Even though she was fighting a losing battle. And I remember the verse of Scripture she left with me that day. I was her and I sat in the kitchen talking together. She brought me to Philippians 4 and 7 where it reads, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The awful thing about cancer is it spreads very easily. I know another man, it began with a wee spot just on the heel. A wee spot. And within six months, it was right through his body. God wants to speak to us this morning about a very, very bad cancer that can appear in the body of believers. And I'll tell you something about this cancer. It spreads easily. It's called the cancer, the cancer of bitterness. And, can, and bitterness this morning is like cancer. It can start off very small, but it can easily spread, friend. And I wonder this morning, is God going to speak to someone? I believe He is. And now listen, this is not a challenging message this morning. In fact, this is a comforting message. Maybe there's someone here this morning and you're battling bitterness for some reason. It takes very little, mind you, to make the human heart go bitter. But the problem with bitterness this morning, it spreads like wildfire if it's not dealt with properly. And mind you, it can spread powerful among the body of believers. God wants to speak to us this morning on how to overcome this morning in the battle of bitterness. Wonder you battling it battling it this morning. It only takes one word. It only takes some wee deed for bitterness to get a grip even on a believer's heart. I want you to notice in verse number 31, the, Apol the Apostle Paul this morning God through His pen shows us if we're going to conquer this morning this bitterness in our heart. Do you know what God wants to do to us this morning? God wants to turn the bitterness from within into the blessing within. 
And the first thing we have to do, child of God, now listen to what God has to say. We've got to confront our bitterness. You can't ignore it. As I say, it's like cancer. You can't ignore it. We mightn't like to admit that it's there. We mightn't want to face that it's there. But unless it's dealt with, it'll spread. And it's the same with bitterness. Especially if it's in the life of a believer. Look what Paul says in verse number 31. He says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking. Peter's bring, or Paul the Apostle this morning is making these believers confront the bitterness that's within the church at Ephesus. You see, the church at Ephesus that Paul was writing to, they were not experiencing blessing, but they were experiencing bitterness. And mind you, there's many a fellowship suffers from bitterness. And Paul the Apostle this morning, he wants to address the problem within the church at Ephesus. And he wants them to, to own up this morning, to admit this morning the bitterness is there, because you'll never conquer bitterness unless it's there. And maybe this is what God wants to do with you this morning. In verse number 20, the Apostle Paul brings us to the root of the problem. In verse number 20, Paul addresses the problem. He says, But ye have not so learned Christ. Do you know that's a problem today with so many believers? It was a problem in my own life in the early days of my Christian life. There's a difference in knowing about Christ Christ than there is knowing and learning Christ. Learning Christ is all about learning Him in a personal way, being in that close relationship with Him. You can know all about Christ and still be lost. Paul wasn't saying that these believers that they were lost, he says, listen, you're saved this morning, but you haven't learned Christ. I know a lot of things about Elvis Presley. I know a lot of things this morning about John Wayne. I certainly could tell you a lot of things about Alex Higgins. And I could tell you a lot of things this morning about George Bess. But that's all the far it goes this morning. I can tell you a lot about them. But I have never had a personal experience where I learned them intimately. You see, the problem with the believers at Ephesus, and I believe it's a problem among Christians today, we don't know Christ in an intimate sense. Knowing Christ in a personal way. You see, the more we get down to learning Christ this morning, through His Word, we'll be the better for it. Why? Because we'll be more like Christ. I remember conducting a gospel mission in 1996. It was September 96. And I was asked to conduct this mission and one night, it was a Saturday night, and those days I preached the Saturday nights as well. And I remember preaching on the judgment of the great white throne. And this was in an orange hall. And I remember saying that night, if the queen herself is not saved, which I believe she is now, I say she'll be at the great, ju great judgment of the great white throne, just like anybody else. I got a phone call about a week after it and says, that's an awful new thing for you to say in an orange hall. And this boy gave me a dress, and it was nothing ordinary. He says, you should go through your notes with a fine tune comb to make sure you're not going to offend anybody. And he gave me this whole lecture, and I said to him, tell me, brother, do you ever preach? 
No, he says, I never preached in my life. Say, did you ever ask the Lord to give you a message? No, I never asked the Lord to give me. Well, he says, well, don't try it because the Lord will get you to say things that you don't want to say. And mind you, that's true. There's things the Lord asks me to say. I could run a mile. But I have to be faithful. And he lectured me how I should stand still when I'm preaching. And I got that list. I, I, I says, now, sir, to get me to stand. See, I don't know why I'm walking about up here. That's hard to believe. I says, listen, sir, to get me to stand still when I'm preaching, I'll be like trying to tie a kangaroo to the lamppost. And I says, thank you for your phone call. And I sat the phone call down. And I can tell you, I wasn't a happy chap. And I can tell you this George McConnell can get better like anybody else. And I went to bed that night like a raging bull. How dare he? And then a week of weeks after, the Lord spoke to me about this. And the Lord just said to me, I was lying in bed. And the Lord brought him before me, and he just said to me, tell me this, how did I treat Judas when he met me in the garden? I called him friend, didn't I? Yes, you did, Lord. He says, how did I treat the Roman soldiers as they drove the nails through my hands and feet? He says, Lord, you prayed for them. Well, he says, you're to do the same for this believer. He's your brother in the Lord. And I remember meeting him one night, and he was dodged. I, I, he, was, he dodged me a number of times, but he didn't get dodging me this night. And I went over to him, and I shook his hand and told him there was no ill will. But you know, I can tell you now, do you know who hurts the most? It's not the person you're bitter against, it's yourself. You see, bitter is like a cancer, bitter. You know, often we often sing that hymn, Where is the blessedness I knew when first I saw the Lord? Where is that soul-refreshing view of Jesus and His Word? You see, the sad thing is, child of God, when a believer gets a hold of bitterness or bitterness gets a hold of him, it can very quickly spread among other believers. You see, bitterness is contagious. Bitter, bitterness can go through a fellowship like wildfire. And as I have said, child of God, how hard it is to watch a loved one battling cancer, how much it must break God's heart to watch the body of believers being ravaged with bitterness. It must break God's heart when believers are bitter with one another. And Paul says this morning, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. God's not asking you to hide your bitterness this morning, dear, and he's not asking you to hide your bitterness this morning, brother. He's asking you to confront it. Let me give you a wee spoonful of medicine now for bitterness. This is a good spoonful of medicine. It comes from Hebrews 12, 14 and 15. Follow peace with all men and, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and therefore, therefore may be defiled. You know, we're to confront our bitterness. Are you bitter about something this morning, child of God? Are you bitter against someone? God's asking you to own up to it. Secondly, in verse number 31, he talks about clearing your malice. He says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. It's clearing the heart out this morning. It's brushing it out. It's power hosing it out this morning. That's the way Paul is describing it. Don't ask it to leave. Put it away from you this morning. 
It only takes one thistle. The seed to destroy the whole garden. And it only takes, listen this morning, one seed of bitterness to destroy a fellowship. And God is saying to your heart this morning, whoever it may be, whatever bitterness may be there, listen this morning, put away from you with all malice. Do you know why? Because it grieves the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that indwells you, the Holy Spirit that indwells me, God is asking you, God is commanding you this morning to put bitterness away from you with all malice because it grieves the Holy Spirit within you. I say, is not a good reason to do so. But remember, it doesn't only grieve the Holy Spirit, it hurts you. And it not only grieves the Holy Spirit this morning, listen to me, it grieves God the Father this morning. When this spiritual cancer of bitterness begins to spread among the body of believers, how it grieves not only the Holy Spirit, how it grieves God the Father, and how it must pain Him when his children are better with one another. Let's remember, brother and sister in Christ this morning, we're the children of God. That's more important than being Baptists. We're the children of God. We're the redeemed of the Lord. And it not only grieves God the Holy Spirit, and it not only grieves God the Father, it grieves this morning God the Son who died for us. How must it grieve the Lord Jesus who purchased us with His own blood when bitterness lies within the heart of a believer? Bitterness in the heart of a believer is the devil's playground. I wonder this morning, is that your problem? If only we knew this morning how bitterness affects the triune God. We would seek to deal with it. God is saying to every heart this morning, including mine, and this is His Word, and this is for your heart, this is for my heart, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. If you really love the Lord this morning, child of God, that's what we would seek to do. You see, this evil speaking about other believers is no good. You see, this bitterness against other believers, it's no good. You see, this unrighteous anger, it's no good. 
and it grieves. It grieves God. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. That's how God wants you to deal with your bitterness this morning. Don't be waiting for the other person to apologize. Don't be waiting this morning for the other person to come to you. This morning now God is saying to you, let it all be put away from you with all malice. Look at verse 32. And here's God showing us how to change our bitterness. Verse 31, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you, and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. That's how you battle and beat bitterness, getting up and going and leaving a church that God has placed you in is not the answer for bitterness. Getting up and leaving the church that God has placed you in to go to another church is not the cure for bitterness, child of God. It's like running from one hospital to another hospital to beat cancer. If there's someone here this morning and you're hurting, God wants to encourage your heart. If there's someone here this morning and you've been pained, God wants to encourage your heart. And God wants not only to guide you through your bitterness, God wants to guide you out of your bitterness. Be kind to one another. He's speaking this morning to the person who hasn't done the wrong. He's speaking to the person who's better. God is saying to you this morning, don't be better towards that person. I want you to be kind to them. I want you to be tender-hearted. I want you to forgive. In my garden, there's a lot of nasty things grow that I never planted. And I'm very proud of my law. Daisies come, daffodils or daisies come, daisies come, dandelions come. But there's always someone I put in the grass and it makes it good. It's called three in one. Feed, weed, and thicken. And you know in verse 32, you've got the three in one to apply to the garden of your heart if you want the weeds of bitterness to disappear. And if you want the greenness of your heart to really flourish for the glory of God. Did you notice the three in one? The key of kindness. The touch of tender heartedness. The fragrance of forgiveness. Verse 32 is how we battle and is how we beat our bitterness. As I have said, child of God, and I'm going to say this again because this is happening all over the land. There's people leaving good Bible-believing churches because they think it's an answer for their bitterness. You can't run away from the bitterness within your heart if you're going up and leaving a church and going somewhere else. It doesn't work. In fact, it makes it a hundred times more worse. Unless you confront it. Unless you clear it out. Unless you're willing to make the change. It 
won't go away. You see, bitterness is like a cancer. It spreads. I say it kills your testimony. I'll tell you this, it kills your walk with God. And it kills this morning all that God intends you to be. And I'll tell you what it does do. It kills any chance of you being Christ-like. And God wants to encourage your heart this morning. Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. God is too holy to be disgraced by a child of his who carries bitterness. In 1991, a father and a son fell out. It was August 91. A father and son fell out. A father and son I knew very well. It was on a Saturday too. The father came to put ends right. And the son saw the father coming into the yard. And the son turned his back on his father. The father turned the car and went home took a massive heart attack on the car and died, never got home. For what I'm saying this morning, child of God, you listen, life is too short for to be better with anybody. And God is too holy to allow bitterness be within our heart. God wants to say to all of our hearts, listen, be kind one to another. Tender hearted, forgiving. That's how you'll overcome bitterness. And that's how you'll become more Christ like. And that's when your life will know blessing again. May God help you. Not only to battle bitterness, but to beat it and to defeat it, that you'll know blessing again. And may God bless his word for our hearts this evening. Six hundred.